giving us a bit of an intro as to who you are, where you're based, and what is it that you do? Okay, um, I'm Adam. We run the UK's only solar-powered horse box photo booth. Um, we're based in Essex, near Malden. Um, we also run a sustainable film and photography business. Fantastic. So really, really niche. Love it. Um, so what is it that made sort of made you decide to get into this industry i mean obviously there's hundreds of people doing photo booths why did you not go down that road um you know what was it that meant that you wanted to make sure sustainability was core to what you were offering i think climate change is becoming a big part of people's lives um and we wanted to do something that sort of joined together photography because i've been a photographer for about 13 years prior to that i helped manage the queen's racehorses so horses um, and then also bring in the sort of sustainability part and try and show people that it's it, it's not boring you can have exactly what you want but it's sustainable as well and um, so that's it took a bit of work to get the photo booth to work yeah. obviously because it, it's not it's never been done before in this country but it's probably one of the best i think but that's my, my biased opinion <laughs> <laughs> and just as a total side note because i'm fascinated by this um obviously if you haven't if it's not sunny outside um or you're doing an event inside um are they previously charged up um the panels how, how does it work if you haven't got direct sunlight to you so that, that was one of the big um questions is is it going to work at night because predominantly you're going to weddings and it's for even guests to enjoy and uh, use so it has about a quarter of a ton of batteries within it because it's a horse box it can take that sort of weight um, really? they, char they charge up all the time we've built a special garage or stable as we call it at home with a clear roof so it is it sits at home it charges up um, and it can run for about four and a half hours in total darkness off the batteries um, so it, it, it can go well into the night. The other benefit is we can power other things off it. It's a power station effectively. And so do you offer the photography business and the photo booth uh, together? Do you do that as an offering or do you tend to lead with the photo booth? We have done a couple together. Um, we try and keep them separately. The photography and film business um, is sustainable. Um, we're a carbon neutral company. Uh, of course, we run it under a limited company. But the horse box came first, and then we worked on the photography business becoming um, carbon neutral. Um, so it's worked quite well. And how uh, how do you make it carbon neutral? I think you mentioned some carbon offsetting um, policies that you've got in place. Yeah, we use um, our energy provider at home office is uh, only uses one hundred percent renewables. That's so so I find them then, uh, and then, then any travel, travel we offset. Um, through a verified carbon scheme with the carbon footprint. Great stuff. And do you find that, you know, being sustainable and being carbon neutral, is that a reason that people want to work with you? I mean, for me personally, it would be. And to work with a company that, you know, prides themselves on those values. Do you find that that's like a turn on for people? Are people not that fussed or it's a nice to have? What's your response been like? Because we take the horse box to wedding fairs so people can see it and talk to us about it. They initially go, it's a horse box photo booth. Yeah. And they're they're interested by its quirkiness. But then when you add in that we're carbon neutral for each couple, we plant them a tree as well. They get a certificate oh, for that. So that's just like a little extra. I don't think we've had anyone go, I've come to you because you're sustainable. But we like I the fact that you're <laughs> <laughs> But we, we people say we like the fact you are and you've thought about yeah. it and it, it fits into our market of outdoor rustic vintage weddings. It's a difficult one because people, I th think at the moment, are it's a really nice idea, but I can get the same thing slightly cheaper somewhere else. Um, because obviously being sustainable and the way we've built it, it costs us more money to do it. So we need to sell yeah. the turn on it. We're not charging a premium because it's sustainable, but our business model says yeah. at the moment we need to get that cost back. Yeah, no, definitely. I definitely find and something, that, you know, a reward at my business. Um, I'm trying to sort of push, like you were saying, around. You can still have an amazing event just without the bad bit. And so I think definitely you have to lead with does it do what people want it to do? Yeah. And secondary, has it 
for these you know sustainable credentials as well so yeah fantastic super okay in just one word and i know this is impossible <laughs> to try and put into one word but how would you define sustainability what's the first thing when you think about a sustainable event or sustainable development sustainability in one word what would you say uh, we talked about it this morning and we came up with necessary nice very good like it <laughs> absolutely is necessary so besides the current pandemic that we're going through at the moment what i think sustainability and the sustainable event industry as a whole has a number of challenges to overcome in your perspective what, what has been your biggest challenge to sort of sell in the sustainability credentials or, or you know what, what's the biggest challenge that you get a lot of it unfortunately does come down to cost i mean you look at a tesla mm -hmm. really good really efficient car very good eco credentials but three times the price of a normal car um i think it's almost for us it's the technology when that becomes cheaper it is becoming cheaper um yeah. we can then start to price match people there's always going to be unfortunately in our business a race to the bottom as in cost yeah. um we've said we're never going to do that we're going to stick to our yeah, fantastic. ethos of providing a good professional service which is sustainable and it's eco-friendly um so we're, we're sticking to that we're being ticky yeah absolutely um, but i think that is it's probably going to be a challenge when we come out the other side because people are going to want to rebuild the businesses, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, but we don't want it to become that sort of race to the bottom. Absolutely. And that is a question actually that um, we've covered later, but I'll bring it up now in terms of, you know, there have been a number of challenges of trying to get sustainability, you know, on the agenda and trying to get people to follow it, uh, whether it's governments, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, society in general. And as you mentioned there, we struggled to sort of get the focus that it needed beforehand and coming out of the pandemic where people are going to be focusing, I guess, more on economic growth. Do you think sustainability is going to be sidelined or do you think people will see that actually there's a, quite a lot of similarities between the health pandemic and the global climate change issue? and think that the you know the, the focus will be more on sustainability than it was before how do you think which way do you think it will go i think it it could slip either way but i think if it's handled right you can make the point that there's more wildlife around it's yeah. clean there you can see the stars at night um mm -hmm. there's places in india where they can see the himalayas now and they've never been able to see them in 20 years or whatever if you Absolutely. if if we as a sustainable community and media get behind those points i think people will go yeah actually you know you're right um i think a lot of people were just carrying on with their daily lives and it's taken unfortunately something like this for people to sit up and go well yeah there's less planes there's less trains cars and yeah. look at the benefits um, unfortunately, unfortunately it's taken a worldwide pandemic to get to that point but and that's the thing isn't this it? is what you could have it's the <laughs> it's the sensitivity around it because yeah. there's been so much you know human loss how do you talk about sustainability without being insensitive to what this has caused yeah no totally fabulous Okay, can you recommend another sustainable business or a partner or someone that you've either worked with or they've done something that's impressed you or inspired you, anyone else that you can think of? Yeah, there's one that sprang to mind. There's, uh, it's called the Oak Barn Frame Farm in Benenden in Kent. They've gone along the similar ethos as if when they've, they've, they've got a wedding venue. Um, but they've recycled, upcycled, reused all materials from the existing farm. They've introduced solar power. They've got a lot of uh, eco-friendly innovations in there. And it is a fantastic place. Oh, oh, that's down the road from me. Need to go and okay. check that one out. <laughs> Super. If you could no. give a piece of advice to someone wanting to be more sustainable in either their business offering or, you know, such as me, as event managers, what would that be in terms of sort of getting into sustainability? What would be you know, one piece of advice that you'd give them to make that slightly that journey slightly easier? I think you need to think what happens after after your event what's what's left over what are you 
leaving behind on the planet what's your impact been and then work the opposite way and say how can i stop that if for example using single-use plastic knives and forks well use things you can wash up and reuse um things like that how are you going to power it um for us obviously solar power is brilliant what's left at the end how can i get rid of that at the beginning yeah and build that into the design. Yeah. Are you currently working on live events or have you switched to virtual or um, have you sort of parked everything for now? What's your current situation? Um, the horse box is literally parked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just due to the charging nature. Charging up nicely. Yeah, charging up. No, there you go, it's parked. Um, the photography business is kind of uh, moving things. Uh, a lot of people have moved events and things. so. Next year is looking really busy, but this year's producing down. Um, but we've I've pushed forwards. I was going to start a live stream service um, next year, but I've actually brought it forwards and it's right. launched already. So that's that's there. And we've kind of di- diverted a bit of um, our attention is to get that up and running. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. Super. And when do you think, you know, realistically, when's your first live event where you think, well, okay, I think it might be safe because obviously a lot of people are postponing or they're cancelling. I guess the question is, if you postpone, when to? Um, I personally was working on an event that was supposed to be in May. It's been pushed to July. I think that's too early. Um, I think we'll be looking at the back end of the year at the earliest. Mm. What, what's your take on that? What do you think on when things I've, might be going back to normal? I've got an event on the 30th of August, which okay. I think might go ahead. Um, it depends on how sensible people are. Um, I think it, it, we're not going to see any normality um, until next year. I don't think, um, but I I would hope. Obviously, autumn this year, September onwards, we might seem to getting back to some form of normality and events mm-hmm. taking place. Um, I think there's going to be a massive difference this year, certainly with live events. Um, with people gathering, I think people are going to be a little bit more considered in what they do. Um, but I think that's going to have a massive knock on for the catering industry um, more than anyone because people are people going to want to walk around and take canapes off a tray? Is it going to have to then be served food? I think that's in in our wedding and event industry. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see the massive change there. But I think. People will want to get back together. It's a, a natural thing to do. But yeah. I think there will be some people that won't, which is fair enough. Um, but hopefully by the end yeah, of this year. Think, absolutely. And I think there's been a lot of, um, you know, obviously people have been switching to virtual events. Um, and, you know, personally, I found them fantastic. Um, and I've been able to connect with people all around the world that I, I wouldn't have done previously. But like you say, the it does come down to that innate need of human connection yeah can't quite get that through a through a video <laughs> screen uh, as much as you can in person so so then lastly what what's the first thing you're going to do when lockdown has been lifted <laughs> what's <laughs> what's on your list <laughs> um, it's go and see my dad who's one of the 1.5 million who's got to self-isolate for 12 weeks um, he's up in Northumberland. I'm going to take him to the pub for a pint. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Was there anything else um, you wanted to mention or anything we haven't covered that you wanted to get across? No, I think, that, I think that's it really. Um, but thank you very much for the opportunity. No, well, thank you.